Today we're going to talk about the steps involved in setting up leave of absence when we aren't setting up the rest of time off. So let's get rolling. So Success Factors has a really useful tool set for tracking things like vacation. It's a time off tool. And also this same tool is used for leave of absence. But if you just had to use the full amount of configuration just for leave of absence, it would be a, quite a pain because there would be a lot of extra stuff that you don't need. Fortunately, Success Factors is built in a bit of a shortcut that allows you to just put in the functionality that you need to track your leaves of absences without having to go through and fill out the full-blown configuration for time off when you're not using it. it be it maybe you have a third-party tr time tracking tool that you're using instead so now what we're going to do is walk through this process so the first thing that you would need to do is you're going to go to employee central settings and you're going to set this up and it's going to be right at the top you're going to set up first off you have to set up time off that's a prerequisite but then the second one is really the one that we need which is time off for leave of absence only so this allows us to take some shortcuts later on when we go through the processes that we're going to and I'll highlight those when we get to them so once we've got the employee central settings set for a leave of absence then we're going to go in and we have to create event reasons same as for any other type of event reason in the system we're going to need to set these up and I'm going to just highlight real quickly the things that you have to put in place first of all the leave of at the the event is leave of absence and then you're going to need to highlight select every leave of absence is either paid leave or unpaid leave just make sure that you select one of those two and that will be your employment status when you put someone on leave of absence Next up, we're going to create the time profile. And so this is where the shortcut comes into play because what I will do here is I'm gonna create a time profile. Normally you'd have to set up a time profile and set it on every employee's record in the time information section, but this is the shortcut that we can use. We just create a time profile with this exact label here that you see leave of absence profile and then down below you can see that all of my time types for leave of absence are already set up so I've already done this in this system but I do want to show you that you don't have to go in and create time types individually you can go into this time profile view and you just click on the little plus and you can add in time types or leave types right here and so this is the process you would go through but I'm not going to go through and create one from scratch because I already have these set up up, and I'm just going to show you some of the functionality of some of these time types. What we're going to show here is the time type. I'm just going to highlight the things that are important to note that are different from other time types. So you need to make sure that you use, you've got the workflow configuration and then days that the leave must be noted in days, not hours. So you, so you have to set that up accordingly. You set up the leave of absence type, the return from leave of absence type, those events. You will set up a configuration for leave of absence for conf for admins as well. So you could have a different workflow template for leave of absence for admin or initiated versus employee initiated. Then the it must be in calendar days, not in not in hours or work days. So you have to make sure that you have that set up and then you set up the ID. And really those are the key things that you need to do is make sure that the that those things are set up specifically with those values. And now we so we have the time profile with the time types all set up and now the other kind of semi tricky thing and I'm going to show you what this looks like if you want to have employees have the capability of initiating their own leaves of absence because this can be a little bit tricky to set up the first couple times so you have to make sure that and I'm just going to highlight the key things that you need to know when you're setting this up on the employee self service role and that's what we're looking at here the employee self service role you're going to go down to employee data and you're going to see that we are going to look at under HRIS actions, there is a manage leave of absence here. And you're going to need to make sure that you highlight that and make that put that in edit mode in order for people to be able to create their own leave of absence from take action. And then there are a couple of other places here. So we're gonna go up right now and we're gonna look at the employee view. So we have to make sure that for employees that we put in time off. 
as a view that they're going to have access to. So that needs to be assigned to the employee. And then under time management object permissions, you're going to see here the things that we're going to hear that we need to, you know, I've got time type, we have to put that in as edit mode. So they have the ability to edit. Then let's see here, I'm going to scroll and try to confirm that I have everything that we need. Again, like I said, this is tricky. Oh, we need to also add a time permission. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that's also under time management object permissions. So you can see here, employee time. Yeah, we're gonna give edit access to that as well. So. Those are the key things that we need from an employee standpoint. Now, I do want to highlight, and of course, for admins, you would just need everything that I just listed here, but there is an additional permission that you would for sure need if you're coming in. As an admin. So I'm in the HR admin role, and now I'm just going to go down and just confirm that the employee view is set up uh, with time uh, with manage time off. So the uh, admin is going to need to have the manage time off as well. Okay, so the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to, I'm in as Darren Demo, that's my employee. And I just wanna show the, what the process looks like once you have it all set up. Not much to it. So you're gonna go in and as an employee, you would be able to go to actions and take it to actions and you would have leave of absence available to you. So as an employee, you would go in to this view and I would be able to select and create it, create my absence, my leave of absence. So I would come in, I would select my leave of absence type. The employee is going to be asked for their expected return date. Obviously that can be, that doesn't have to be precise. And then you would, you would submit that. Now in this system, I've got this set up with a workflow. So it would go for a couple of levels of approval. I'm going to short circuit this process just just in the interest of time. I'm not gonna go through the approval process, but I, instead what I'm going to do is I just wanna show you what it looks like when we bring somebody back from leave. So I'm gonna just do that real quick. Now, one thing I'm not showing you is that if you go to job information while someone's on leave, you're going to see a record inserted on job information that's going to show that the person's on leave. But in the interest of time, we're just gonna skip that over. Instead, all I'm gonna show is I'm in as an admin, I'm in as myself, and then I'm gonna go into Darren Demo's record and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be bringing them back from leave because he's back from his leave of absence. So I'm going to select his record. I'm going to select manage the leave of absence and I'm just going to select pending. And I'm going to, this time I would change the actual return date. So I would put in whatever the, whatever date that Darren actually comes back. I would put that in the system and then I would hit, sub, hit submit. And if, unless there's a workflow set up on the return from leave of absence, then we're done here. So that is pretty much the entire process of setting up the config for the leave of absence and then doing the leave. I hope, I hope you find that useful.